This just in, XMP bad for your computer? All right, we're gonna talk about this today. Uh, there's been some developments over the past week or two, and we're gonna go ahead and discuss it now that we've kind of got all of the informations that we need to do a news story. The Eclipse P500A from Fantex is a premium mid-tower that combines airflow performance and aesthetics. A full mesh front and a ridiculous amount of fan and radiator configurations with up to seven 120 millimeter fans ensure that your components never thermal throttle. The Eclipse P500A is available in both RGB and non-RGB versions, making it a flexible choice for your next system builder upgrade. To see the full list of specs and configurations, click the sponsored link in the description below. Okay, so this seems to be like the year of drama, I think, when it comes to some brands, and it's unfortunate, but, you know, okay, fine. 2020 sucks. Let's just get it all out of our system right away. We're gonna talk today about XMP profiles on your memory. It's something that I have always promoted you should do, or at least try. XMP stands for Extreme Memory Profile. It was started as an Intel um, validated overclock for your memory. Now, to understand a lot of the warranty stuff that we're gonna talk about here, you kinda gotta go back to understanding how memory worked years ago. So back before Intel moved to, uh, got away from a Northbridge type of system, if you will, because there was a Southbridge and Northbridge and you had your chip. And basically the memory controller was moved to the chip, the actual CPU. So the memory controller is on board with the CPU, which means all voltage, all input output, all uh, just the timings, everything is handled by the CPU and not the motherboard or anything independent of it. So having an extreme memory profile by default is actually overclocking your CPU. Now, over the last couple of weeks, you might have heard some drama taking place regarding NZXT's BLD. And I became very interested in this story and I watched it closely and we reached out for comment and we had phone calls. And rather than just go online and make a big drama piece about it, um, for views or whatever the motive is when someone wants to go and just make a big to-do about something, I went straight to the source and I'm like, guys, what's going on here? And I told them, I said, look, we've promoted BLD and we're not going to promote BLD anymore as long as this policy stays in place. And I'm speaking specifically about NZXT's voiding of warranties of systems that turn on XMP. Now there's a couple things to talk about right there. That, that's the headline of the article and then the, you could read that and you could deduce almost anything you want out of it. And, and we wanna keep this to facts and things that we know. Um, first of all, XMP is an overclock, first and foremost. And we've talked about this before. I've done a million videos saying, hey, you went out and you bought yourself some nice 3466 Corsair special edition memory. You plug this in a computer, whether it be AMD or Intel, it's gonna run at 2133 because that is the actual base clock of DDR4, and I think that changed to 2400 along the line somewhere, and I remember the exact spec or when it changed or why, but it could run anywhere from 2100 or 2133 to 2400 megahertz out of the box, which sucks because if you're like, I paid extra to have faster memory, well, you know, really all you paid for is memory that's validated and tested and overclocked to run at that particular speed at those timings that are printed on it, and no, I'm going to get that. Here's the problem with XMP. It, is not unilaterally universal. I, I guess I said basically uni, uni twice. It's not consistent across the board at the voltage necessary to run those speeds. So by default, 1.2 volts is what DDR4 runs at. But you'll find most XMP profiles run at 1.35, which is a voltage overclock to the CPU itself. Then you'll find some modules run as high as 1.5 volts which is a fairly significant amount of voltage bump to the memory controller on the CPU. Now remember what I said, the CPU is what contains the memory controller. And that's true for both Intel and AMD now in 2020. That wasn't even the case for AMD back on FX. So everything's kind of caught up now where everyone's sort of running the same type of infrastructure, if you will, although the way the CPUs themselves work are vastly different between Intel and AMD. That is an overclock nonetheless. Now on AMD, there was a ASUS spec that was sort of made for it called DOCP. I don't even know exactly what it stands for, but basically ASUS went through and validated memory timings and such on AMD uh, on their motherboards. So you'll see it referred to as DOCP on some AMD boards and XMP still on other boards. And that's just so that you understand there is um, no theoretical difference between the way they work. It's just different naming at that point. But AMD also has to provide that voltage and that, that memory controller strain 
in order to validate the memory. Now what's going to happen here is you can turn XMP on any CPU you want. It, it, it doesn't even have to technically be an overclocking CPU. You can grab like a, a Celeron processor and like the new Celerons, not like don't go back to like 2010 and buy a Celeron. Uh, like even the new Celeron stuff and you can enable XMP. All that's telling the, the computer or the CPU to do is run the speeds that this is calling for. Now let's say you get a CPU that's not a lottery winner. It is, uh, it is literally on the edge of its performance capabilities. It barely met the spec to not be binned down a step. If you're on the ragged edge and you're now calling for more voltage specifically for the memory and it's, bring, it's asking for more voltage like the 1.5 volts or maybe 1.4 volts and the CPU is not able to safely provide that voltage, you're gonna start getting all sorts of weirdness happening. You can get random restarts, you can get crashes, blue screens, way uncorrectable errors and or in the worst case situation, a dead chip due to the overvolting. Now all overclocking requires extra volts for the most part. I mean, I think we're pretty lucky today where in fact we can get good overclocks and an undervolt in many instances and I think that's really sort of spoiled us. But a lot of people think that when you're asking for a ridiculous amount of voltage for your memory, and by the way, when we did our LN2 overclocking, we were going as high as 1.85 volts on the DIMMs that we were running. That voltage is not actually being sent to the chips themselves it's also the memory controller. So you're doing more than just sending voltage to the RAM. That's why you can run a crap ton of voltage through memory and not feel it necessarily get very hot because this is the bin, if you will. This is the storage for the memory. There's other things in play when it comes to memory overclocking. So rewind to what I started to say about NZXT's BLD is they had a policy that has always been on the table, apparently. It's been this way and, and they're not the only S, uh, SI that does this. Enabling XMP on a pre-built system of theirs would void your warranty. First of all, I, a really common response to that is how are they gonna even know if you enabled XMP? In fact, they really wouldn't be able to know unless there's some sort of monitoring in, built into the system that you're not aware of. Now let's say for instance, you enable XMP on your desktop and you've got your CPU, right? Um, and something goes wrong with it and you take your CPU, whether it be Intel or AMD out of your system and you send it in for, for RMA, there's gonna be zero way of knowing that your system uh, or that your CPU was overclocked with XMP. The thing though, that went a step farther in my concerns regarding the NZXT BLD XMP voiding your warranty issue is the fact that the memory was actually advertised specifically on the AMD rigs as well as being 3200 megahertz. But what happened is customers started getting their systems seeing that it was only running at 2400 megahertz on your memory. Now, if you follow AMD performance at all, you know there is a significant difference in performance, especially in games, between 2400 and 3200. It may only be 800 megahertz, but we found that 3000 or 3200 is the sweet spot for AMD. We're going farther than that. Didn't really get us any more FPS. In fact, we've got videos on that. You can, recently, within the last two months, you can go and watch those videos and see how they, how they did. So that got us into a bit of a, a dicey situation where now we are, we are talking about false advertising and selling something under the premise of a certain speed and then voiding a warranty if you actually try and use that speed. So that's, that's where I basically said, I will not promote BLD unless something happens here. So let's fast forward now to NZXT's statement. I'll link it down below. I'm not gonna actually read it, but not only did they explain what XMP is, which I sort of just did, but you can do some more reading for yourself if you want. They explained that the deal with the warranty, they say it seems harmless, but because of the reasons I just explained with the, regardless to, or regarding the overvolting of the memory controller, um, could lead to a failure, which could lead to a dead part, which is why they would want to void the warranty if you enabled a feature. It's kind of wrong to advertise a speed that you don't get and then charge for that speed. NZXT has now reversed that policy. So now if you have a BLD system and you enable XMP, they're no longer gonna void your warranty. They're gonna keep your warranty intact, which is the way it should have always been, in my opinion. I have XMP profiled every system I have ever owned as long as Extreme Memory Profile was a thing on both AMD and Intel, and I have never once had that be a problem. In fact, Phil was around when we were doing LN2 and ice water cooling and all that stuff, where we pushed the memory so far in terms of voltage, we were both certain something was gonna blow up in that aspect. One 
1.85, and I think I even did 1.9 volts at one time. But we never once have had a problem. I've personally never, ever, a single time, had XMP profile cause any sort of damage, instability, or degradation of a CPU. So seeing these types of policies were really kind of surprising to me. But NZXT has reversed that policy and are now retroactively supporting XMP. Not only that, this blog shows you how to enable it now. So now they're like, whoa, okay, fine. You want XMP? We'll support it. Here you go. Here's how to do it. Which, it's kind of funny because now we're moving into the, I, I think there's gonna be two types of reactions to this news from NZXT and hopefully other SIs will follow suit. I, and I don't know which SIs are both voiding and or supporting XMP. You should definitely look at the warranty information on an SI if you're looking at building or buying one from a builder and knowing before. But like I said, it is very difficult for someone to know whether an XMP was enabled or not. Um, people are either gonna say, awesome, that's the way it should have been all along, good on NZXT for doing or making it right. And then you're gonna have those people that once a wrong has been performed, you are wrong forever, no matter what you do, Screw NZXT, they're just doing damage control. Yeah, obviously this was damaging and they're trying to fix that wrong, but NZXT will never have my business. They're just trying to do this to make themselves look good. Yes, to an extent, they wanna support the community. They saw the outreach and the outcry of people that were like, hey, this is wrong, this is stupid. I was one of those people that got on the phone and told them that this is false advertising. You are not gonna get us promoting this as long as this policy is in place. I don't claim to have any sort of weight in their internal decision. I can just say that I was one voice with an opinion. We got on the phone and we stated our case as to why this is so bad for the community. With that being said, they are saying that, you know, they're never done improving. They're always gonna try and do what's right. Um, they're already testing hardware um, to ship BLD with XMP pre-enabled which I think should always be the case. You, could, you should advertise the speed at which it's shipping with. You know what, hey, you could, I guess you could even take a step back and say, it's shipping 2400 megahertz. If you're so inclined, here's how to enable XMP will still support it. So they could even go that route if they want it, but it looks like they're trying to launch, they're doing their own internal testing to determine the feasibility of shipping them with XMP enabled. But at least as of right now, NZXT will not be voiding your warranty um, if XMP is, is enabled. Now. This might come as news to a lot of people, and I, I will always talk about this. The speed that's on your memory is not what you get when you turn it on. You get the base clock that DDR4 is designed to run at, and that is gonna be nine times out of 10, 2133, occasionally 2400, depending on some of the specs. I've never had one boot at 2400. It's always been 2133, but that number that's on here is an overclock. So Jay, is it safe? All I can say is that with my personal experience now, uh, as long as XMP has been around since day one, I've had an opportunity to mess with this stuff, overclock it, tweak it, play with timings, break it, fix it, do it again. I've never had a system die or degrade or break because of XMP. I feel it's perfectly safe. I think this is one of those things where I don't know if maybe there was pressure on the, uh, the, the CPU manufacturer side because apparently Intel will also void your warranty on your CPU if you, if you admit to them during an RMA process that XMP was enabled if you didn't pay for the overclocking insurance. I don't know if a lot of people know that even. Intel quite a while back when the K processor first came out, uh, or the K variant, you could, I think it was like 20 bucks or 25 bucks you could pay to insure your CPU against overclocking death. And then they would send you another CPU, kind of like one of those, you know, when you're at Best Buy and you check out and they're like, hey, you want the extended warranty? It's kind of like that. Only I've never actually seen it offered anytime I bought an AMD or a, an Intel CPU anywhere. I'm not sure exactly how you get it, but theoretically, if you go to Intel to RMA your CPU and you're like, hey, I was running XMP, they'll be like, hey, you didn't get the warranty. <laughs> Sucks to be you. We'll sell you another CPU, but that's, that's the way it's been. So there you go. I just wanted to do this content piece. I thought this was a big deal. I think it's a big deal when a company does something like this that could be seen as extremely shady and I also think it's a big deal when they're willing to admit a mistake, back step, or backpedal, fix it, fix it retroactively, and then blast it out to the world that, hey, we did wrong, we're sorry, we're making it right. I think all brands should follow suit. Uh, I've had to do this a couple of times in my YouTube career where a company does something really wrong, makes it right, 
and then I get claimed for being, I, I get claims of being paid to blast this information out. This is just purely me wanting to share this information because I thought it was more important to try and do what I could to uh, encourage them to make it right with direct communication rather than leaning on them with the typical drama alert type of style of look at what NZXT is doing, terrible, bad NZXT, bad you, and then you know everyone starting the pitchfork and torches. And I feel you get less done that way than just directly communicating, which is the path we chose to go. Anyway guys, thanks for watching today's video. Um, I'm curious, put down in the comments below if you made it this far. If a company does a wrong and they make it right, are you still leery about buying from that company or does it strengthen your trust in that brand? I'm one of those people that will tend to wait a little bit and be like, okay, let me see what's going on here. Do they really mean it? And then I'll kind of ease back into that brand. Or are you just a, bl a blind loyalist? That's like, I don't care. I'm, I'm following them into the, into fire if we have to. Or are you one of those people that's just, you did wrong, you're off my list forever. By the way, if, you, if you're one of those people, eventually your list is empty because everyone does wrong at some point, including me. Like right now, I'm gonna do this. All right guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. No Ram was injured in the making of this video. I'm, I think we'll test it later. You gotta test the XMP, bro. <laughs>